Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue from Middle Tennessee State University. We introduce you to our new Chief Online Learning Officer, Dr. Trey Martindale, and we talk about his plans for our online programs. We describe a new master's degree program in nutrition leadership. And we tell the remarkable journey of one of our recent graduates whose thesis has received statewide honors. I'm Andrew Oppmann, and this is Out of the Blue. Welcome to Out of the Blue, I'm Andrew Ottman. Dr. Trey Martindale recently joined Middle Tennessee State University as our Chief Online Learning Officer, an important role given that one third of all MTSU students take one or more online course in pursuit of their degree. Well, Dr. Martindale, thanks for joining us on the show. It's always a pleasure to see you and talk to you again. Thank you, Andrew, I'm so glad to be here. Glad to talk with you. Well, this is your first time on Out of the Blue, and we're introducing you to the first time to many of our viewers. Uh, this is a completely new position at MTSU that you occupy. Can you talk about the role that you're, you're coming aboard in and what you hope to accomplish? Yeah, this is a new position, but we've had a, an online presence at MTSU for quite a while. And so we have about 16 completely online programs right now. And I think I was brought on to essentially energize that and to, to, to bring some uh, vision and direction to the online programs as we think about supporting our faculty and our students. And so my background is, is actually in instructional design and technology in the broader sense, and then focusing on online learning specifically. So I've got a, a pretty strong teaching and research background as a professor in online learning and developing online programs. So that's been my background. So let's let's give our viewers a sense of what got you to Middle Tennessee State University, you, most recently at Mississippi State University. Talk about your experience there, and then uh, you spent a, a few years at a school to the west of us, right? That's right. I spent 13 years at the University of Memphis and was actually recruited there a number of years ago to help um, expand their online programs. And so there we actually created an online master's degree and then one of the first completely online doctoral degrees in instructional technology that existed in the country at that time. So that was a really great opportunity to spend time learning about online learning and developing courses and developing programs and helping to expand um, you know, opportunities for students in the state of Tennessee. And so I was well, well familiar with MTSU just being right down the, the road, so to speak, and had visited campus many times. And so I knew about the good reputation that MTSU had. And so I did spend about four years at uh, Mississippi State as a department chair there, a department head leading efforts in instructional technology. So it all kind of ties together around helping to improve teaching and learning. And so, you know, online instruction is just another way to try to amplify the resources of MTSU. Well, absolutely. And we were talking about this uh, before we started our interview. Uh, uh, clearly, one third of our students, enrolled students, take one or more online courses. So there are students who take exclusively online learning, but there are also some who use that as a way to make the schedule work. We really need to be there for everybody. That's right. You know, we, we used to talk about uh, non-traditional students, those adult learners that are looking for degree completion and and wanting to, you know, maybe they're already working in their career, or have a family. These days, that's actually the traditional student. That's the majority of students. You know, the, the average age of a college student is now hovering around 28. So that 18 to 22 demographic that we think about is actually decreasing in the U.S. in terms of, you know, the way our demographics are going. But the number of college students continue to increase as we try to reach out to those adult learners. Let's take a step back and, and for those that may not be familiar really with the major activities of MTSU online, how would you describe this formidable task you've been given and the opportunities that it presents? So one of the things that we do is support the development of online courses and programs. And that comes through our outstanding faculty. And so we're, we're sort of faculty coaches. We employ instructional designers, people that are experts in instructional strategies and teaching and learning, to coach our faculty and to help them as they think about how they're going to uh, best deliver their course in an online or a mediated environment. And so that includes things like you know, technology help, but also thinking about ways to engage students in the online environment, which is so important. We don't want to have um, 
low quality online courses. In fact, we want our courses to be of the highest quality they can possibly be. So that's part of our activity. The other is actually supporting departments with, uh, we're able to fund some full-time faculty members that are teaching online, those that have been trained to, to be effective online teachers. So we support departments that are growing their online presence and providing faculty for them, or at least funds for, for them to hire the faculty that they need to deliver those programs. And then we do a part of student support as well, helping with student advising and student tutoring. Because as you know, we have students that are adults and are very busy and have active careers, and they're sometimes doing their coursework late at night or whenever they can. And so we uh, arrange for tutoring services that are available 24 seven that are beyond what you know a, a normal staff person might be able to do. So providing those kinds of services that are specific to online students and their special needs. Let's take a, a, a further step back and look about the time we're in right now. The, uh, um, we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel of the COVID-19 pandemic. There's still um, quite a few things we need to do to stay careful and, and, and be uh, prudent in our operations. But we've learned so much uh, during this time. And so much of that dealt with the technological um, opportunities and skills and things that we had to overcome. How is MTSU Online and our faculty going to benefit from what we've learned? That's a great question. I would first of all say we've seen a tremendous response from our faculty and from our staff in terms of responding to a, to a very difficult situation. And so I would say coming out of this as we be, begin to um, turn a corner here, the skills and the experiences that our faculty have had are going to benefit them going forward. Because as, as we all know, technology is not going away, but we want to use it in the best way possible. We want to use it as an effective tool to reach out to students. And so all those skills and all those workshops and, and hours spent learning how our course management system works by our faculty is going to be helpful for them going forward as they continue to teach in what we might call the, the new normal. And the same somewhat applies to our students as well. They experienced a, a challenging situation in trying to continue their studies during this pandemic. But now that they've had a little more experience, they're a little more accustomed to how to operate in an, in an online learning environment. And we're, of course, trying to ramp up all those services for students so that they're not left behind. And that includes even things like access to technology and access to the Internet. We found out that those were, were major issues for, for some of our students. And so just trying to make those services available to all students um, is, is part of our new mission. Dr. Trey Martindale. Chief Online Learning Officer of Middle Tennessee State University. Welcome to MTSU. We're glad to have you aboard. Thank you so much. Couldn't be more pleased to be here. And we'll be right back. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and its success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I'm a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school, or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader, and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities.
Welcome back to Out of the Blue. I'm Andrew Oppman. MTSU has a new online master's degree program, this one in nutrition leadership. And here to tell us all about it is Dr. Elizabeth Ann Smith, the faculty member running the program, and Carmen Bell, one of the first students enrolled in this degree. Well, Dr. Smith, I'm gonna start the interview with you. We appreciate your time and welcome to the show. Thank you. I am so excited about this degree program. I know a lot about the Master of Professional Studies program. I'm a graduate of it in the strategic leadership sequence, but this is a brand new sequence. Can you tell us about what you're offering and how it applies to the career fields uh, for students seeking jobs and opportunities in nutrition? Yes, our Master of Professional Study concentration is leadership in nutrition. And it is, in our opinion, a unique program because it blends the leadership skills with nutrition skills. Um, we offer this program not only to registered dietitians, but also to dietetic interns and others that are working in the nutrition field or have previously studied nutrition. So it could be people from the health department, people from extension, people that are teaching in the FCS education area, um, kind of a wide variety of people with any kind of interest in nutrition. A lot of the other master's programs in nutrition are clinically based for clinical dietitians or community based. They really are almost all focused in nutrition, whereas ours really has that blend of the leadership area along with some specific nutrition skills. And we offer enough variety within the nutrition classes that people can kind of pick their niche, find the area of nutrition that they have the most interest in. Well, Carmen, I'm going to pivot to you because you found this program and it went, wow, this is something I would like to study and I'd like to pursue. Talk about how you discovered it and uh, what you hope will come for you career-wise as a result of it. Well, as Dr. Smith said, the program is very unique and Dr. Smith is one of my undergraduate professors. So when they were creating this specific concentration, she definitely was telling me and my classmates about it often, letting us know. And so that got me interested. We talked about it. She told me that I could get credit for the internship that is required to be a dietitian. Most masters are very clinical based or they're very community based. You never get a broad variety. And so with the leadership and nutrition concentration, I can work on my leadership skills while also improving on some of my nutrition skills. That is so wonderful to hear. And I'm going to ask you about your internship experience in just a second, but I'm going to pivot first to Dr. Smith because Carmen mentioned uh, uh, the advantage that internship provides. And I know that's a program that we're very proud of at MTSU called Prior Learning Assessment, PLA. Can you talk to our viewers about that? Because that might not be top of the mind for some about how that is a great way to save you both time and money in pursuit of a degree. Yes, we feel like the PLA aspect of our program really is going to help pull in a lot of students who may not have considered our program. Um, we are in the process of partnering with internships like Carmen mentioned. And for those interns, they will be able to use their internship to um, receive the six hours of PLA. So while they're in the internship, they will keep um, some of their projects and things like that that have shown that they've mastered the different um, skills that they need during their internships. And they will actually show us those as evidence for that PLA. So it is a nice, easy, quick way for them to get six credits. So for example, I had a student yesterday that I spoke to that's working in the area of kind of a food service director. And so she has a lot of leadership skills already. So we're looking at two different syllabi. And so she'll be able to show that she's met those objectives and receive that PLA for the work that she's doing. Carmen, Dr. Smith was telling me before we had the interview of how competitive these internships are. Can you talk about uh, the opportunity that you had at your internship? Where was it? What did you learn? Um, I did my internship through Iowa State University. It was a distance internship with a concentration in technology through health promotion. We also took classes, so it was a mixture of supervised practice, 1200 hours, where we would go in various places such as out in the community or in a hospital to do clinical. We basically just had the opportunity to apply the things that we learned in our DPD program 
to a hands-on side of things to, you know, really learn and get that experience. Um, it was great. I loved it. We had a really big project to focus on our technology through health promotion. And that I felt like was perfect, especially during times that we are now where everything is moving to technology. So learning how we can still reach our clients, reach our patients through technology if we need to. But it sounds like Dr. Smith, MTSU has had a pretty good track record, even in this nationally competitive environment of, uh, of finding these internships, that we've, we've done historically a good job getting those opportunities connected to our students, right? We have. We have a very, very strong undergrad didactic program. I'm going to give all the credit to Lisa Sheehan Smith. Dr. Sheehan Smith has really, uh, she is the director of that program and has really provided wonderful leadership to that program. Um, she and I basically split the senior level didactic classes. Uh, she teaches more of the management area and I teach more of the clinical area. But we have had um, between 97 and 100% match rate in the four years that I have been at MTSU. And so I couldn't be prouder. We have wonderful students and um, I'm seeing that as well in our new master's program. Same type of a level of student. Dr. Smith, you were mentioning that one of the reasons that the concentration was created is because there was a change in the requirements to become a registered dietitian. Can you talk a little bit about that and why this degree program helps fulfill that? Sure, that change is coming up in January of 2024. So January 1st of 2024, you will now have to do the undergrad DPD program, the bachelor's in dietetics, and then you will have to also do an accredited internship and complete a master's program to be eligible to sit for the registration exam, the national registration exam. So that will add one more component to being able to sit for that exam to become a registered dietitian. And so because of that, um, we have positioned our program really at the right time. And so like the standalone internships, so they are really not affiliated with the university or a hospital, are kind of in that process of looking for master's programs that they can partner with because those students will all have to have that master's by January 1st of 2024. Well, Dr. Elizabeth Ann Smith and Carmen Bell, one of the first students in our master's program in this great new field, thank you both for joining us on Out of the Blue and sharing your news. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. And we'll be right back. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and its success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I'm a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. Nothing is more expensive than a missed opportunity that could have changed your life. Maybe you're just graduating high school, or are working and need to earn a degree to advance your career. Or you aspire to be a leader, and a graduate degree can make that happen. Whether you're just starting out or retooling for the future, Middle Tennessee State University can help you get there. MTSU, the University of Opportunities. Welcome back to Out of the Blue, I'm Andrew Ottman. Ben Burnley had a remarkable academic journey that brought him to Middle Tennessee State University, where he graduated in spring 2020 with a master's degree from our College of Media and Entertainment. He shares with us his story 
and we tell news of a fantastic honor his graduate thesis received. Well, Ben, I'm going to start this interview with you because you've got the news that we want to, that we want to share with our viewers. The Tennessee Conference of Graduate Schools selecting your thesis that you prepared for your graduation from MTSU in the spring of 2020 is the most outstanding thesis in the state of Tennessee. What an amazing honor. I, can, you, can you give our viewers a sense of what this thesis covered and what, uh, what topics you explored? Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. Um, it is an honor. It was an honor to win the award. I certainly didn't sit down thinking about winning awards uh, when I started writing it. Basically, when I sat down, I wanted to look at how social media um, affected our understanding of politics and how we participated. So largely, the paper sort of plugs into theories of democracy and how we learn about politics and engage in politics, specifically through deliberative behaviors like discussing the news with others and sharing our opinions. We took social media use, explicitly political social media use, um, and considered how that might change the frequency of voting for individuals. And so what we wanted to see was if you use social media, Twitter, Facebook, things like that, and um, you use them for politics, did you end up voting anymore? Describe for our viewers how you went about collecting the data for this. How formidable a task was that? Yeah, so luckily I'm glad to be doing this research in uh, 2020 and not in maybe 1970 because there's a lot of great data sets available online. So the, the data we use is from Pew Research Center here in Washington, DC. Wonderful, and Dr. Jason Renicki of the School of Journalism and Strategic Media, uh, a colleague and a friend of mine, we've, we've, we've done a lot of great things together at MTSU. I've reported on your news that you've, you've done through MTSU poll. He said data, and I knew it had to be Jason somewhere because you and data go hand in hand. Uh, you were the chair of his uh, thesis committee. Walk me through how proud you must be of Ben, but how impressive a document this thesis is. Oh, we're just uh, bursting with pride uh, over Ben's success here as part of our program. It's really a prestigious honor in competition with really uh, every university with a grad school in the state. Uh, and the best thesis of them all for the year is, is really uh, an impressive honor and, and just really reflects the great work that Ben did on his thesis and research in general during his time here at MTSU. We're just so happy to have been able to be a part of that. So Ben, you earned your master. You got past uh, Dr. Rinicky and his, his thesis committee. You won this big honor. And now we're having a live interview with you uh, from a, another college campus. Tell our viewers where you are right now. Yeah, so I'm pursuing my PhD at Georgetown University in Washington, DC. Getting my PhD in political science here. I'm also a dual degree student at the McCourt School of Public Policy. So I, I still have a, a foot in both in the research side, but then also maybe a more applied uh, public policy side as well. We're very proud that your, your master's degree at MTSU prepared you for these opportunities and, and put you on that launch pad. For our viewers, can you, can you describe your journey? Where, where, you know, I, uh, let's start with the French horn and uh, where you, uh, how that began the series of events that led you to MTSU and now to Georgetown. Yeah, it's definitely a strange tale. When I was growing up, I, all I wanted to do was play music, and I knew from a relatively young age that I wanted to go to college for music. So I went to Florida State University, studied French horn. I also played guitar and, and did some other things. And upon graduating, the best place to be to do music was Nashville, Tennessee. And so I moved in 2014 to Nashville, started playing in some bands, I toured with a band for three, four years. Uh, and as we sort of wrapped up and, and that time in my life sort of came to an end, I sort of had started to think about what would be next for me and wanted to go back to school and Middle Tennessee State University, uh, the program came up and I said, well, you know, maybe this is a good second, second act for me. Jason, I know this has to this has to pull up the heartstrings for you, right? I mean, to have a student like Ben that comes to our, our school, and he really described. I mean, that's that is the recruiting pitch for Middle Tennessee State University, right? 
Yeah, yeah. And Ben had a tremendous amount of, of talent and really took to the work that he did here like a like a fish to water. But um, yeah, that is is right in our wheelhouse. You know, we want to we want to help people with that second act. We want to help people find their, you know, longer term career and, and calling. And and so Ben's a great example of that. Ben, I, I, I'd, I'd like you to reflect a little bit if you were talking to a prospective student and they were inspired by your journey. What, what, were the big, what were the big takeaways that your path from French horn touring musician and now studying to become a top-notch political scientist at a, at a university of great renown as well? What advice would you give the younger self uh, of, 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 the, of the things that you've learned along the way? Yeah. For me, it's always been stay curious and continue to ask questions. You know, early on for me, that looked different. It didn't look like political science, but at some point in my life, it changed. It was questions of political communication. And uh, that, that's what led me to Middle Tennessee State. Find people that are willing to help you answer those questions. And that, that was very much what um, Jason was for me. Um, and the rest of the, the faculty at MTSU, I think with those two, two things, you really can get far. Um, is if, you're, if you're willing to sort of sit down, ask the questions, find people who, to help you and kind of do the work, I, I think that's, a, that's sort of, my, that's my path at least. That's fantastic. And let's, uh, Ben, let's give you an opportunity to give a shout out. Jason's on, on the interview, but I know there are other faculty members here at MTSU that uh, you credit to, uh, to helping you reach your goals. I specifically got to work closely with Dr. Ken Blake, who helped with the thesis, and also in the political science de department, um, Dr. Krobkoff. He got an email from a communication student saying, hey, do you mind if I add in to your political science class? And he, he took me in and, and didn't hesitate. And so that sort of opened that door. And so I, I don't know if I'd be where I am without that, that as well. Well, Dr. Jason Renicki of our School of Journalism and Strategic Media and Ben Burnley, a soon to be doctorate from uh, Georgetown University and a proud recipient of a master's degree from MTSU. Ben, it was an honor to hear your story. And Jason, it was great to hear about how you helped Ben reach his goal. Thank you both for being on the program. Thanks so much. Thanks for having us. And that does wrap up another edition of Out of the Blue. You can find news and information about the campus 24 hours a day on our website, mtsunews.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram for additional special content. Information about our response to the coronavirus can be found on another website, mtsu.edu slash coronavirus. I'm Andrew Oppman. Stay safe. Stay on course and remain true blue.